send it right there. Never. <laughs> Dude, the welder's not on. <laughs> <laughs> What is up everybody, I'm John. I'm Ivan. And we are Cars and Cameras, and we are starting on the front suspension on our CB750 powered cross cart today. How long is it? Eight foot. Eight foot? Yeah. That is not bad. So one of our concerns, what's that? Three feet shorter. Three feet shorter than the rail. We, yeah, we are already, we're already scheming up a drag race right now. But uh, uh, one of our concerns has been wheelbase. If, this, if the wheelbase on this thing is too long, then uh, we're gonna need a really tall ride height or else we're gonna bottom out on everything. So, I think we did a decent job in tucking in the rear suspension at least as far forward as we could have safely. Now we just need to do the same for the front. All right, so we spent a few hours today figuring out the design for the front suspension. We've already cut pipe, uh, bent flat bar, and kind of figured out what we're gonna use for hubs, spindles, and our pivoting pieces. It's not the most simple design, but independent suspension never is, and it should work pretty well for us. So all we need to do is uh, notch some tubing, and then we can show you the design and start building. We wanna make sure it doesn't have any flaws right from the get-go, the main one being bump steer. So when we redid the front suspension on the monster truck, I say redid, we really just patched it, it had really gnarly bump steer. When the suspension compresses and lifts, the toe and the alignment changes depending on where the suspension is. A little bit of a redesign on the front front end of this cart. Uh, we, it's gonna be a little harder to mount suspension points at angles. I like to go straight with it. So we've, uh, made these other bars that we're going to weld in and we're going to eliminate these two outer bars which will allow us to put these pivot points for our front suspension in place straight rather than at an angle oh and the biggest deal is is the uh we're trying to eliminate bump steer so we're building the frame to match up with the steering rack so here's the steering rack we're gonna use from Go Power Sports. I love this rack. This is the same steering rack that was on the uh, lawnmower that would do 65 miles per hour. It was really smooth. It was real smooth, 65 miles per hour. You can near about let go of the steering wheel. Well, I feel like we could have let go of the steering wheel and you it did. kept going straight. What, when I rolled it? Mm -hmm. Are you okay? I'm alright. Not the steering rack's fault. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, like I said, the inner tie rod ends are uh, exactly a foot apart, 12 inches, and we want the pivot point to be the, the same. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> It'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so like I said, this, the pivot points of the steering rack, we want those at the same point as the pivot points on the uh, control arms. So we have the steering figured out. Here is our spindle and hub assembly. This hub is from GoPowerSports.com. It uses uh, sealed bearings, nice and smooth, and we also have a spindle from GoPowerSports. This and this are actually from like a farm supply store. I think they're trailer parts. Anyway, they're basically going to act like ball joints in this front suspension. So after about like four runs of the store and some parts from GoPowerSports, I think we're finally ready to get started on this front suspension. So I cut some 14 inch pipe for our control arms and we're gonna weld that to our tractor uh, or our trailer top link Cover. just to see how much travel we're gonna get. Hit it man. And we know that butt welding it to that top link is gonna be a weak point, but we're hoping we can get away with it.
That's about it there. It's about 14 and a half inches. 15. Ten, in, 10 inch travel. So I think we've done all the thinking we could possibly do on this front suspension. So the only thing there is to do left is send it. Cover. Yep. Ah, right down my feet. All right, so here's our mock of the lower control arm on the passenger side. The upper is gonna be mounted somewhere around here. Uh, we need to go ahead and cut some uprights to weld in, and we need to come up with a shock tower mount. Yeah, well, I, if we come up with a shock that I can go by, we can do it. Yeah. <laughs> so we already cut and fish mount that pipe last night, but we're gonna to need to make a trim to it because it's gonna act as our upright and upper control arm mounting point. Yeah, I cut it. I cut this thing to last go night to go behind this. Yes. And I mean, if you're fine with it being behind, then we can just roll with it. Nah, I want it to be up against the edge there. Look all nice and stuff. Well, we could uh, cut it at an uh, angle and fill it in. And send it right there. Cover. Dude, the welder's not on. <laughs> Take two. Cover. Alright. Cover. Alright. Alright, air attack. So I think we need a uh cross piece here dude uh, just the right height for the upper control arm to mount to sounds good <laughs> it's all tacked barely okay. as you can see. Alright. Look at that. Why do we not have more travel? Okay, we do. We do. It's just all that stuff is gonna have to wear. It's gotta get tightened up, yep. So things were going well. The lower control arms were done and we started working on the uppers and then we realized we are out of top links. These pieces right here, we bought eight of them and we've already used all eight. Uh, and we can't, we can't take an hour to run to the store today. Um, but what we can do is use a different size that we bought. By mistake. By mistake. We bought these absolutely humongous ones. So what are we thinking? Uh, well, this is the frame size. This is the top link size. It's perfect. I think we cut this part of the frame off, slide two top links on, weld it back into place, and then we have our upper control arms. that'll work for us? I think it'll work. I'm leveling the lower control arm and then I'm gonna give, uh, make sure this spindle has the right camber 
which right now it should have positive camber rather than negative. And yes, it does. So we have dialed in negative two degrees of camber and five positive degrees of caster. Ike is gonna go ahead and tack one of the top control arms. Dude, that is all she's got. Those are our restrictions. So the passenger side is done. We're just verifying our alignment numbers and then we're gonna go ahead and do the upper control arms on the driver's side. And then dude, we're gonna have a roller. Yep. Jeez. We're hoping that that is gonna... It'll, it'll, oh God. It'll loosen up with use. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It looks so cool from here. It really does. And there's still plenty of room for your feet. There's plenty of room for my feet. But I hate to be the Debbie Downer. If we had a, a catastrophic failure on the front suspension, and those things kicked in, we'd lose our feet. Probably break a leg. Well, we haven't done all our bracing yet. No. So we still have a few odds and ends, but for the most part, this front suspension is pretty much done. And we built it all from parts from Go Power Sports and like some tractor parts and just raw metal. And I think it's turned out pretty well. But the true test is of course going to be the ride. This thing's looking good, dude. Yeah. It's looking more and more legit every second. We need to do the steering. Uh, we need to mount the shocks. Um, and overall, we still need to triangulate and brace this whole thing, exhaust, brakes, um, lots to do, but this is good progress. I think uh, the final version of this should have some taller tires on the front, but for right now, dude, it's, it's pretty wicked. So 70 horsepower, aiming for 700 pounds, it should rip. I mean, we could build something faster, but like we wanna have fun at the same time. We don't wanna just be purely terrified. There's still plenty of room for our feet and pedals, which is awesome. Yeah, I think it turned out pretty darn well. If you enjoyed the video today, guys, leave a thumbs up and subscribe to Cars and Cameras for more future updates on our CB750 cross cart. And uh, pick up one of our shirts or stickers or t-shirts or hats at cars-cameras.com. And Ike, of course, at... I think it'll be fine. There we go. Facebook, Instagram, at Cars and Cameras Reviews for sneak peeks. If y'all were following me on Instagram, you guys had seen this like two weeks ago. Anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.